Hi everyone, welcome to Tom's Man Shed and welcome to part two of the full review of the unboxing, the assembly, the, all the settings and this part about the problem with the rollers on this, the EBOS or IBOS, I still don't know which uh, is the correct, whoops hang on, let me put the lid on the right way around to begin with. <laughs> Not that it matters, but yeah, the I'll call it EBOS. The EBOS Polyphemus 3D filament dryer. Now I go through, like I say in part one, fully what all these controls do and the assembly of it and that. But I finished off on that one with mentioning a problem with the spools slipping on the drive rollers and not rotating properly now i'm going to show you fully in this one what i mean take that off for ease of showing you but the way they've done it it's quite um i suppose quite a tricky problem to solve because you've got to have with it having driven rollers and rotating the spools Obviously, the rollers, uh, one set of rollers have got to be driven, but they've also got to freewheel in both directions for when you're using it just to, as a spool holder when you're printing. So as, as the printer's extruder is dragging the filament off the spool, it's rotating freely on these. So when it's not being driven, these rollers have to freely rotate. And as you can see, this red bit and this rubber bit are the bits I've added to make to stop the spools slipping. I'm going to go into full detail about them very shortly. But you can see they are you can see the free to turn in both directions. And yet when we turn the rotation function on, you'll see they are turning. And you can see it's like a jerky movement. And the reason being, that is the method EBOS have used to drive them. So I'll just show you the drive mechanism close up. I can show you on here, but you'll see it better close up in a minute. But you'll see just under here, these two drive wheels one under each roller are on like an eccentric cam so i'll show you that in detail now so this is the method like i said they've, they've chosen to drive them now if you look at this rubber this rubber o-ring here makes contact with them rollers but it doesn't do it throughout its whole travel as i turn it you can see there's a raised bit it comes up it's a bit hard to see. I'll show you in more detail later with a replacement one they sent on this one. You could probably see it better on that side. As it goes round, there is like an eccentric. So it touches the roller there and drives the spool, then the spool stops and then it comes round and drives it. The reason being they've chosen that is that when it's just in free wheel mode when it's not the motor isn't on you can just sort of pull the rollers off and it will go on to the lower bit and not be in contact with that so it enables it to free wheel but the problem is the material we've made the, the rollers out of is a very hard plastic and there's not much well there's no real grip on it you can see there it is textured slightly but it is very very slippy and it's the fact that it is quite a slippy and not a very grippy substance that gives the problem the roller roll moves as you'll see later fine you know that ne that mechanism grips it and it turns it and there's quite a bit of power when you put your fingers on it you can feel it's a uh, quite a bit of power but 
it's rolling round like that, but the spool isn't powered round. It just just sticks, as you'll see. So what it should have really is a rubber coating all over it. But then, of course, being a bit lower and, and sort of stickyish rubber, it might not freewheel as well, might not release itself from that O-ring and freewheel as it, itself. The method I'd have chosen was I'd have had like a little lever on the side here to move that mechanism up and down. So in drive mode, you click it into an indent there, and that rubber O-ring is making contact with the rubber roller on here, making a really firm grip. And then when you're in freewheel mode, you can just click it to a, an indent just a quarter of an inch below, and that frees up this. That's the way I'd have done it. Could have done it with a ratchet as well, but remember it has to go both ways because you can have your filament feeding out of this way or that way, or indeed at the top of the lid. So that's basically what this part is about, how I solved that. So I emailed, I filled in first of all a support uh, query on eBoss's website. I didn't get any response to that. So I gave it a few days and then I emailed them direct to their uh, email address. And I got an instant reply, literally instant, saying, sorry, it's the Chinese New Year and... Uh, we're on holiday for a while. I think it goes on about 20 days or so. But uh, yeah, so I waited and I waited. I was going to get in touch with them again, but they got in, they got back straight after the uh, Chinese New Year. And they said, sorry about the problem. And we're sending you some parts. And this is what came. Sorry, that, that didn't. That was in the original box. But what they sent was a new motor... And the motor isn't the problem. Two new rollers. These are the, the old ones I took off. Two bearing supports. Like I said, I'll be showing you how you fix all these. And four. They're in there somewhere. Four new bearings. Again, none of that was required. The only things that were the problems with these, and I thought they might have altered the texture or the grip on these. As you'll see, when I put the new ones on, there is a bit of an improvement. And on the old ones, I don't know whether, the, well, there must have been a bit, something different about this cam and that cam. Because when it was in its driving mode, one of them drove a bit longer. So like an inch or so longer than the other. So that the, the reels weren't in sync. They don't have to be in sync. But you'll see that demonstrated uh, soon. The new one of these they sent me. Yeah. Was more uniform each side. And like I say. A slight bit of an improvement. You'll see. But it did still slip. So. I thought. What sort of method is there to get it to increase the grip i also tried forgot to say i also tried sanding the edge of here some of the reels i've used this is one i printed for me bamboo labs x1 carbon there and you'll see this has got a much wider bit there because the ams the box on the top of the printer there the automatic uh, material system that holds four rolls of uh, filament likes a wide band there, unlike some which are a very, very thin tapered band. So I even tried it on this and it was just the same. And also, you know, quite a full reel or an em uh, a nearly empty reel, you'll see, it still skipped both rollers exactly the same one skips one minute one skips the next so i tried one idea putting masking tape around the edge and that helped I, I didn't film that but it did did help but i didn't want to do that to every reel i've got 
what you really need is some better grip on that roller. So this is what I did. I used on this one, and both work. I would say this rubber one works a bit better, but this one, all that is, is heat shrink. A piece of heat shrink tubing. Again, I'll, I'll show you in detail that. And this is a stuff called self-amalgamating rubber. Really good, um, handy stuff. I will put a link below where you can get it from Amazon, this rubber. It's dead handy for various household and projects in your car, like replacing a burst radiator hose and that. It's like a stretchy rubber. Um, I've got a bit here. It's like this stretchy rubber. There's no adhesive on it, but when you wrap it round onto itself and hold it, just the heat of your hand and it it sticks together like a solid piece of rubber. So I use that because it's quite sticky and I kept it clear. You can see there's a cut away bit there and a cut away bit there. I kept it clear of the drive rollers underneath. So I'll show you how I fitted that heat shrink and the rubber. I'll also show you obviously how to change the, the drive mechanism and the rollers. It's dead, dead easy. I'll also show you how to change the motor, which is accessible from below. We didn't need to change the motor, but you do get a spare one with it. It's got, it's supposed to have a, a life of 1500 hours, which to me doesn't seem a lot, but they give you a spare motor and it's a doll to change. So I'm going to be showing you that as well. And at the end of the video, I'll show you why, apart from this fault, why I still really, really like this unit. It's got loads of great features. I'll quickly run through all its good, good points. And I'll show you its effectiveness on drying a roll of nylon that I've had in the garage in sort of like cold, unheated garage for a couple of weeks. I'll show you how much uh, water it got out of that so that's all to come near the end of the video but first of all i will show you the actual reels slipping on the original rollers so let's have a look at that first right as you can see both reels starting from the top you can see the back one is struggling a bit it's stuck already jerking to move the front one is moving okay i was going to show you the back one going faster the back one actually travels further each time but i'm glad it's done this because it hasn't done it every time but you can see it has stuck so i'm gonna get it going It's going now. I'm going to wait till it changes direction. So I'm just going to crop it a bit out till uh, it's coming up to two minutes and it changes direction. We'll, we'll do it going the other way. Should be changing direction soon. Right, it's just changed as you saw there. So we'll line them both up at the top. So they're both together now, as you can see. And it's not sticking now. And it's nothing to do with the direction it goes. It, it can stick in both directions sometimes. Sometimes it's the front one that sticks. Sometimes it's the heavy spool. Sometimes it's the light spool. There's no definite uh, sequence to it. But as you can see, the front one now is the one that's sort of sticking. the back one so it's already half a, a revolution up on it see where the stripes are and if you look at the front one you can see yeah that is stuck now that front one going that direction and it was fine before like I say it's not just the position put them both together So 
So they're both going round now. They're not sticking. But you'll see the back one. Not coming back now, it's just changed direction, so. Let's line them up again. Right, you can see they're lined up perfectly now. But you'll see the back one is gaining on the front one because it travels a bit further when it isn't skipping if if they both travel round without sticking that one always travels a tiny bit further we'll let it get another complete revolution speed this tiny bit up Now you can see it's coming up now the back reel to where we started them both together and the front reel is way behind even though none of them are stuck this time. So as you saw there it was definitely uh, slipping. Uh, if I say the word sticking uh, what I really mean is slipping. The, the, the roller, the, the, the reel sticks in position but the reason it's doing that is because the roller underneath is slipping so it's always a slipping problem. Now, as you saw there, it goes both directions as well. I forgot to mention that. it's It's got a, a preset sort of timer. At around about 1 minute 55 seconds, it switches direction. So sometimes when it's stopped rotating and it's slipping there, when it switches back, it does actually start rolling then. Now, as you saw it then, the back one, if they didn't stick, if they didn't slip and they both move together, and they're in movement all the time, the, the furthest one back, as you were looking at it, always seems to roll a bit more than the other. So I reckon this cam, one cam one side, had a bit more of, say, a gentler bulge, or, or it was bulged for a bit longer, so it was actually gripping the roll a bit longer than the other one. Uh, so we're going to put the new ones they've sent us on now, just to see if they do work. So first of all, I'll show you how you swap them out and it's dead, dead easy as you'll see here. Okay, so to uh, replace these rollers at that drive mechanism sent me, you take out these five screws, this one here and these four. Now these bearing supports, I'm gonna mark them because it says on their video instructions, I'll give a link to that if I can in the description. It says this way around the holders, so I'm just going to mark it on the inside here. Some yellow acrylic, then I know which way around they are. So it's these five screws. This one here, where I broke the little bit I showed you before. So this just comes, whoops, out like that. Cover. You can see the heating element in there now. And these just pull up like that. This one quite stiff fit in there and it sort of comes out of that there we've got oops, one bearing in there and one bearing in there and like I say you could just about still see my yellow dot there that's the inside so I'll place that there and the that's the old roller and the same here out I'll put that that side and that's the other roller and this just pulls out just straight up like that oops so I'll leave that there so I will put their new bearings in. So these are the ones that sent me. One, 
two. So that's the, the bevel gear on the end of the motor. Uh, we'll, I'll show you later. There's nothing wrong with this motor, but I will show you it being replaced later. That's uh, accessible from underneath. So this is the new bit they've sent me. That just clicks in there like that. And these side pieces. Again, you can just see the yellow paint on that one. But that is the indentations, they go to the outside. So these are the two brand new rollers they've sent me. So they feel exactly the same as the others. So you can't see it making much difference, but if we put that in there, and that in there. Click down. roller you can see the paint on there a bit better because that goes to the inside the cut out indentations to the outside put that roller in there click down and then centerpiece pack so as you saw very very easy mechanism to change should you need ever need to. So I've got a spare one now. Let's put these four screws back. And be very careful with this one because like I say on the other one I did split it, tightened it a bit too tight, so it is countersunk, but just tight enough to hold it, and it says check them, so they should rotate like that, because it will push, if it's on that bit of the cam now, it'll just sort of push that out of the way, and then they're free to rotate, which is what you want when you're using it to feed your printer you do want it to move like that but we'll plug it in and we'll see if these are any better but as I said they feel and look sorry yeah it's hard to tell it might be a bit a bit rougher texture it's hard to tell though Let's put it together and see what it's like this time. So as you saw there, dead dead easy. So then five screws, a couple of minutes work to swap out the rollers. So uh, let's see if these drive the spools any better. Right, so we've got all the me new mechanism in now. New rollers and, and that. I'm going to turn it on. I've got them both lined up as you see. So... Let's see what happens this time. Well, already it seems to be keeping more in sync than before. I know you can't see the back one now, the stroke, but you will when it comes round. So I'm going to leave it running in sort of real time till it sort of comes round again to that one mark where it was before keep it a closer eye and if we have any skids or whatever or sticks that back one seemed to stick then a bit and then yep that back one has stuck again or it's slipping caught up a bit now so they're going to be out of sync already because there's it's not rotation but it's not as bad as it was while they are moving round they do seem to be both moving the same amount then stopping the other one before seemed to move a bit further you can see it's behind now the stripes coming up but that's because it has skidded a couple of times and hasn't always turned so i'm going to speed it up now and do about 
two or three revolutions and don't forget it's changes direction as well so we'll see what's what and you'll be able to see how much out of sync it's going again I don't know if you notice there it did skid a bit that back one didn't always turn so let's speed it up now and then I'm going to swap them over Okay, so I'm going to swap them over now and see which one sticks. Now. Yeah, you can see. I don't know whether you can see or not. I can, but uh, the back one. Are stuck. If I put a black mark on without nudging it, there. you can see that back one has stuck. You see it's not moving, but the roller underneath is. It's not against the side wall. The roller underneath is moving. Okay, so as you see, we've still got the problem of the slippage, but it was better. It didn't seem to slip as easy. And when it wasn't slipping, you could see both reels were keeping up with them. It was pretty uniform, the drive of each one. As I said, it doesn't matter if one goes a bit quicker than the other, but it, it does show that new mechanism they sent me mechanism they sent me must be slightly uh different than this this one the old one must have a different sort of bulge more of a bulge on it to grip the roller a bit more so i'll just show you side by side the two and you may be able to spot the difference but if you can it's it's very very close i filmed this uh, a week or two ago when i was putting together part one of this video hence the different shirt but let's have a look at both these uh old and new cam mechanisms side by side so you can see if i hold it there that's about the best angle as i rotate it round you'll see there the o-ring is higher because under there it's on like an eccentric like a cam which raises that o-ring higher so that's when it makes contact with the rollers Again there, and again with this one. See, that it's showing it a bit better there. That seems to go up a lot higher than the other one does. If you look at the that action compared to that action, don't know. It might be me. That's the old one. And this is the new one. Just that side and the other side. So yeah, slight, slight, slight improvement, but uh, still slipping. And like I say, you could see the difference probably see the difference in that it is better more in sync but we've still got the slippage problem so my solution is i thought i'd try two different ones like i said some heat shrink but loads and loads of heat shrink very rarely used anything this diameter but found it was just a good fit over there the roller i'll put it on screen here here or wherever is 12.1 millimeters diameter so you want sort of like a heat shrink with a 12.1 ish shrinkability or whatever internal diameter and that go went right over there like that 
and I just cut it to length. So you've got to be careful when you're doing it because you don't want it going the full length of the roller because, like I said, that bit has to be there. If you put it the full length, it will catch on this O-ring even when it's not at the raised cam part. And that'll stop it freewheeling. So if you was using the uh, the unit as a holder for a spool next to a printer and the extruder of the printer was dragging the filament, like I say, you want freewheeling movement with as least resistance as pos if you did it the full way. So what you, you find you have to do is just shove it up to as far, say it's, say it's there, and your roller is trying to say that's the position of the roller, just push it up as far as you can to there, and then shrink it on. Obviously then there is a chance that, you know, or it will happen that that part of your spool will be over, but at least it'll be gripping one part and that'll give the uh, power. So that's what I did on that one. And like I said, this one, I used this stuff. So I'll show you putting it on the old one. So like I said, that's how you get the tape. It's got a, a protective sort of wrap on it one side, but there is no adhesive as such. It just relies on the stickiness of the rubber and it hence it's named self-amalgamating, the fact that it self-amalgamates with itself under heat. So you would sort of start it off, I'm trying to work backwards to the, to the camera, but you'd start off, say there, stretch it out. You would make a better job than this if you weren't holding it up to the, the camera, but you know what I mean, so... And then just wrap it around there as thin a layer as possible. All you're trying to do is increase the grip. And then get to the end. On this one, it's probably easier just going end to end. Like that. You see, I've got a bit of a lump here where I didn't sort of concentrate enough when I was showing the camera but you can see the rest of it there is sort of like quite smooth so do it the full length and then just get a scalpel or something and cut the required amount off I'll show you how there we just go around there like that I'll do this on the desk and then I'll slice my finger off so you can see I've cut round there and then you can just pull the bit off you don't want. And you can see it's already it's already formed a uh, like a washer. How good it it sticks to itself. And then you got that bit and that would be the bit driven by the roller there. So they're in the machine now. The heat shrink one and is the one furthest away as you'll see in a minute on the camera the rubber one is the nearest to us i'm going to do the same test with the same two reels uh this one's nearly empty this one half full i have done it with the, with near even more empty ones on fuller ones and it works great but i've rigged up me osmo you see behind just now and i've just filmed 10 minutes 10 non-stop minutes of them both motoring around. Uh, I'll, I'll show you the, the first minute in real time to show you that they're reasonably in sync and no slippages. And then the next 10 minutes, I've got my phone at the side of stopwatch. I'm gonna speed them 10 minutes. I don't expect you to watch 10 minutes of stuff going around. Like I said, I watched it all myself. I didn't do anything else. I never took my eyes off it for 10 minutes because I wanted to see if it did stick or whatever. So let's have a look at that now, and then we'll uh, we'll discuss the results. Okay, so just to prove, 
this is the new improved version we've got the um, heat shrink that side and we've got the rubber that side and like I say you can see there is only one sort of side of the heat shrink in contact with the thing the other bit is just on the original roller because we've got to clear the rubber drive shaft same there the rubber that I've just put on only goes up to just this side I've got a magazine here a chock in the front of the dryer up just to get it level so that these reels don't slide side to side I don't think the one on the rubber one would anyway due to the grip so I'm going to put this on now here and I'm going to start stopwatch once I speed it up but for now I've got them lined up we'll just see there may still be a tiny bit of slippage on on the um, the heat shrink one particularly because it's not as grippy as the rubber but uh, it's a much much better as you'll see and then we're going to speed it up and time a full 10 minutes uh, because as you know it changes direction every two minutes so it'll give you a chance to see if any of them stick they might still get a bit out of sync they might not be exactly with the, the different diameter of the heat shrink and the rubber and, and maybe still a bit of slippage on the heat sink but uh, you should definitely see an improvement so going to uh, start it once let it get it to do one full revolution then we'll start the stopwatch at time 10 minutes so here we go and fingers crossed we don't get any uh, slippage like before so we'll just let this front one get round to the 12 o'clock position again but I'll probably decide to change direction before we get there. So you can see we're still pretty much in sync after one full revolution. We haven't had any slippage yet. But that back one again is maybe a midges ahead. But we'll start start the stopwatch now here. And we'll speed the video up so you don't have to sit through 10 minutes. Let's go. okay so you can see we're up to 10 minutes now and i have been watching all the time and it's about one is about i would say sort of 70 80 degrees no no 100 coming up to sort of like 180 degrees out of whack of the other so i think but i have been watching it the full 10 minutes i was going to go away and do something for 10 minutes but I thought I'll sit and waste 10 minutes of my life, the things I do for YouTube, because I didn't want to miss any bits of it stopping. So I've watched it non-stop for 10 minutes, and neither of them has faltered. The reason one has got a bit further away is because when it stops and starts, I'll go into that in more detail shortly. But yeah, 
As you saw there in the speeded up bit, there wasn't any instance in the whole 10 minutes of any slippages. So, uh, great. Problem sorted. So, yeah, as you saw there, worked great. Um, solid 10 minutes. Neither of them skidded, skipped, whatever. Nothing. Uh, and I can confirm it's gone a lot longer than that. I'm going to be showing you very soon this. It went through a full 12 hour drying cycle. Uh, some nylon that I'd left in the garage in damp conditions for a couple of weeks. I'm going to show you that, weighing it before and after and showing you how much water it got rid of that. So, yeah, it worked really, really well, as you saw. And just to confirm that it freewheels just as well, if we put it on uh, Revolve, you can see them going round at the back. By the way, the sound... Particularly, uh, you could probably it's probably picking it up now. The mic, I don't know, but the sound on the Osmo picking it up there, the motor sounded really loud. It's not. I can hardly hear this. It's right next to me. When it's at the other end of the room, I just can't can't hear it. So again, another reviewer said the motor is quite loud. I, I don't think it is. The, the microphone on the cameras make it seem louder than it is, but that is very. If I hold it up, maybe. I don't know whether you can hear that or not, but uh, yeah. So you can see they are motoring around fine. And like I say, now they're off and we've still got, it's still free wheels. It's easy, nothing is catching on it due to having that gap each side. Cut back the, the heat shrink and the rubber so it clears the the o-ring drive mechanism underneath so yeah great so i'm going to show you like i said the, the actual drying of this nylon and see how much weight it saves uh, to prove it is getting rid of the moisture in it and then i'll finish off with a summary of uh, all the things it does all its good points and its couple of uh, bad points and finish off with a, a summary of uh, why I do like it and a couple of suggestions for eBoss. But uh, like I said, I've shown you how to you uh, I've shown you how to renew the drive mechanism under there and the rollers. But under there is the motor, the electric motor. Should you ever need to replace that, and like I said, they do give you a spare electric motor, and the kit they sent me had one in it as well, so I have two spare motors now. Um, I will show you how to renew that, and it's dead, dead easy. Let's have a look at that now. Okay, this is how you swap out the motor. Again, dead, dead easy. So just take that screw out there. This is underneath. See the air inlet vents here. By the way, so just take that flap off there, and you can see the motor inside there. So what I found is, if disconnect that lead, it's just a push-in lead. And what I did, because I had a practice at this first. I take this lead here, because when you're trying to get it back in, it tends to get in the way. So just tape it temporarily to the case. And I don't know what you can see, but you've got two screws each side. One there, and one there. So you just take them out. For when you're taking these out that you don't drop it inside it's not very magnetic that screwdriver of mine so there. and this one and if you'd be quite sort of gentle you've got to move it around to get it in this but the bevel gear on the end is quite a loose fit. It's only held on by like the tension of the oil. It's not a hard push fit or anything. So as we pull that out, 
So be quite gentle, or you might find it might detach itself. If we just take it out like that, you can see it's on there. And you can see how loose it is. Hopefully. You can see it moving up and down the shaft. And it's got a flat on it. And as I pull it off, there's two flats on the thing. There's that spacer goes over it. And like I say, it's got two, two flats on it. That go that side. And it's got some oil around it there. So once you've pushed it down, like I say, it's only the, the tension of the oil that keeps it on. So you would put that on your new motor, or your replacement motor, and then negotiate this around. best you can just a matter of squirming it inside right. and then once you've pushed it down on the holes it engages with the with the cog underneath Okay, putting them in with a screwdriver, uh, pulling them out, it's a bit not strong enough. Again, don't go mad with these, it's only a, a plastic housing. It's a bit thicker than the, the bracket on the other bit. So that's firm now. And then line it up red to red. Click that in. Took it out of the way. Yeah, the white plastic round the motor feels a bit harder, it's probably nylon or something. This seems a bit more brittle, but again, just tight enough down there. And it's as easy as that, swapping the motor. So yeah, again, easy enough renewing the motor, just a few minutes. So yeah, well thought out in maintenance, I think. But uh, right, now I mentioned this, I wanted to try it on a drying cycle. And if you look at part uh, one of this two-part video, I go through in great detail what all the numbers on the screen mean. And part of the routines, you can set it for PLA, PETG, nylon, whatever, and it has a preset drying time, which you can alter. Again, I go into that thoroughly in part one. But it has its own pre, uh, pre-installed parameters. And on the nylon one, which it denotes as PA, on, on the, the, the notation above on the screen, PA is nylon. Evidently, nylon, from what I've read, is the most uh, likely of your filaments to absorb moisture. Nothing absorbs moisture more than nylon. So I thought I'd pick that as an experiment. And I put this reel in the garage a couple of weeks ago. And it's a, it's a dry garage. It doesn't leak. There's no water in there or anything. The roof doesn't leak. But obviously it's not heated and it is open to the damp atmospheric UK, very damp conditions. So instead of being on my, dry, on my rack here in a nice dry shed, I left it in the garage for two weeks. And I weighed it before and then I weighed it after. So let's see the results of that. Right, so this is after a couple of weeks in the garage. So damp conditions. See, we're at zero. Well, let's see how much it weighs. 845 grams. So we're at 845 grams. I'm going to give it a, a full dry out. Like I say, it's nylon. On the nylon program in the heater and see if it has absorbed water. So 845 grams after two weeks in the garage. 
So then I put it into the filament dryer on the nylon cycle for which is for 12 hours. It selects 12 hours at 70 degrees. So I gave it its full time. About halfway through, I took it out and I weighed it and it showed about half the weight loss as it does now at the end. So it's seeming that it does need that full 12 hours on nylon. So uh, let's have a look at uh, what it weighed after that. Okay, it's just finished 12 hours on the timer on the nylon setting 70 degrees it was 845 when it went in 845 grams let's see how much it weighs now so that is 836 so 836 grams so it's lost nine grams so it doesn't sound much nine grams of water but was curious what actual amount in a glass or whatever, nine grams was. So uh, let's have a look at that now. Right, let's see how much water nine grams, how much water nine grams actually is. So I'll put this little dish on first and turn it on. So we're on zero. I'll put that on. Right, that weighs five grams. So we want to weigh out nine grams of water. So if I put 14, get this up to 14, that's up to 12. Ooh, hang on, 14, how's that? So we've got 14 grams in there, but the plastic dish weighs five. So we've got nine grams of water in there. So I'll flip the camera back to its proper position and we're doing this live okay so we've got our nine grams of water well, let's have a look how much that is okay so it's that amount so it doesn't sound much, but I suppose, you know, if you had that much water in your reel of nylon, it would make a difference, come come out of your printer not as good as when it's thoroughly dry. Um, so yeah, it'd be interesting to see how much PLA and uh, PETG absorbs. I might do that for a, a future experiment but uh, i'm not going to bother doing a video on it but yeah that is the amount of water it dried out after a 12-hour session in the dryer so uh yeah uh, surprising uh, surprise me what nine grams of water is so and that would i think make a difference in spitting and that as it comes out your printer so yeah, I think that's about it. There's not a lot more I can uh, do now in the two parts. We're coming up to about an hour on this one as well, and three quarters of an hour on part one. So I'm just going to finish off now with a, a quick sort of summary of what I like, and I'll put on screen the things I like and some suggestions. So yeah, things I like are, first of all, turn the lid off. Inside it's got, as you know, the two desiccant holders, and... Which is great if you're using this as a storage container for two spools after you've dried them. That'll that'll help keep them dry. I won't be able. I'll be just sort of drying them and then using it straight away. We'll think the heat air, air outlets are there. The, the heat it's quite a big one, and it's some sort of is it PIC or something like that. It says on the website, um, it's a better than normal heater. I don't know, but you've got outlets for the heater there. I don't know you can see them, and you've got them at the back, so it's a pretty even temperature. It's got a fan, which not all ones have a fan. It's got, on the outlet, three outlets for your filament at the top, so you could have this under your 3D printer feeding up to it. It's got three on the front, and it's got two on the back, so loads of outlets. It's a normal mains plug, it's not using a separate brick. The screen is one of the sort of poor points. 
that is like a flexible covering and that would be better if it was a proper a proper solid less scratch uh, more scratch resistant harder plastic i love all the different settings again refer to part one for detail on them but you can set the temperature you can set the um amount of power high medium or low you can set the countdown timer to for how long it's on from continuous right down to half an hour it shows you the temperature within the unit it shows you the temperature you have selected it's got loads of uh, built-in programs for pla abs nylon polycarbonate PETG, ASA, PVA, TPU, polypropylene, and three separate memory settings. So you can put your own parameters in. You can alter, if you're not happy with any of their parameters, you can alter all them. Um, it's got the rotation function, as this, <laughs> this video's mainly been about, sorting that out, uh, which is great. And your full display on the front and it's got as you turn it off it shows you the um, relative humidity within the unit that is pre-selectable and then you fully shut it off so i love all that about it um, it's not cheap at 105 but when you compare the features to others that haven't got a fan and haven't got rotation and don't hold two spools i think it's not a bad price what i would do different of course if eboss are listening please sort of try and sort out the grippiness of these i've come up with a, a homemade solution it'd be so much easier if you came up with like a grippier roller uh with a groove cutting it to clear when, when it needs to the mechanism underneath or like i say even easier a move up mechanism to make contact and a move it down to put it into free wheel mode replace that with a proper sheet oh, i'm not asking for gorilla glass or anything like that but a harder sheet of polycarbonate or something it would be handy if the when it showed you the uh, relative humidity on the front it would be handy if it showed you which level you had selected because when you select it 10 20 30 40 50 percent it, it it will sort of maintain a level of that but it there's no display of what you have set just what is inside also when you're going up and down the menus from the timer as i showed you in part one you get right down to 30 minutes if you want to go to one of the higher times again you've got to go all the way up 30 or hold it in continuous all the way up to uh, that it doesn't scroll around that'd be handy other than them two uh, points you know mainly because they're the rollers and them two about the screen and the the menus i can't really see much not to be pleased with um everything else is good customer service so far like i say it was great they did answer and said we'll send you this pack unfortunately that wasn't my problem it wasn't a problem with the drive it's the the hardness and the of, of the roller as explained so that really didn't uh, sort it out too much but uh yeah very very good printer uh printer very very good dryer and compliments my uh beautiful where are we i'll just show you carbon x1c bamboo lab carbon printer behind me so yeah really really nice so hopefully these two parts have been of some use if you're contemplating buying something like that if it has been of some use oh yeah i, I think i said it at the beginning but in case i haven't the only amazon link i'm putting below is for that tape that self-amalgamating tape but it will be an amazon affiliated link and uh, if you do click on it and, and get some or anything else from that browsing session i will get a few pence commission from from it, it won't cost you a penny extra but uh, I've, I've got to explain that 
So, yeah, hopefully it ha has been of some use if you're thinking of uh, getting it. If it has, please give me a thumbs up. If it hasn't, by all means, give me a thumbs down. If you've got any suggestions on your on yourself on making these hard rollers a bit grippier, maybe there's a, a, a paint-on sort of textured paint I could use. I have heard of that. I know they do it for like under cars and that, like a thick thing, but it might be a bit thick. If you can think of any better way of doing it, I'd be interested to know in the comments. I was thinking of just sort of like sanding a rougher surface on the roller itself, but I didn't want to damage it. These two things I've done can be cut off with no damage underneath whatsoever. But uh, now I've got two spare ones, I might do a few experiments. But if you've come up with anything yourself, if you've had a similar problem, please let me know in the comments. So... Thank you once again. If you haven't already subscribed, it would be great if you could do by clicking the little picture here of the shed. And the two tiles here are links to other 3D printing videos. Part one of this two part being one of them. So there'll be plenty more reviews coming along. In the pipeline is a water jet flosser. I'll be doing a review on that soon. And anything else that takes me fancy. Hope to catch you for one of them. Thanks for watching this one. Bye for now.